would you trust your life to a self-driving car which is as good as a human driver? I would not. I, I think that the public will hold self-driving cars uh, to a much higher standard than they hold human drivers. We need to do far better. And I'm sorry if that disappoints you, because the current industry trend of making incremental innovation is going to take a long, long time. But I'm not pessimistic, because this is not how technology innovation works. It's not a progressive marginal innovation, it's sometimes quantum leaps that goes through a new way of thinking. And is it worth it? It's worth it because there are tens of thousands of lives at stake. And if you are more business oriented and not only in the uh, motivation of saving lives, this is also a compelling business opportunity. Because even before autonomous cars, smart cars helping you as a driver to drive better and safer, it's a big market, it's an emerging one, it's a very compelling one, it's a tens of billions. But what you need in order to fulfill the needs of this market is not only able to see things, is not only able to understand things, it's what we could call situation awareness. You need three things. You need to see things, you need to perceive what's happening, you need to understand what's happening, and you need to link this to a certain location. You, you need to know where you are, where things are, and where things are happening. Bad news is that the sensors you need to do this, I think they don't exist. Not yet. I'm going to explain you why I'm saying this. And the software you need to solve this second challenge kind of exists, kind of. And you're going to understand what I'm saying that. So let's focus on these two challenge, starting with the sensors. You know for sure that cameras are widely used in, in this market. So uh, let's take an example. Do you see the kangaroo here? Who can see it? Well, there is no kangaroo, so it's normal. But can you see the woman and the bicycle? She's here. And this is actual fo footage of the Uber accident with an autonomous car, a mortal accident. Because you cannot see the camera, cannot see it. They actually saw the woman some meters away, some seconds away. And they were driving at 70 kilometers per hour. So what shouldn't have happened, happened. So there is no obvious way where you can trust only cameras and visible things. So perhaps we can try thermal cameras. We could say, OK, we should have been able to solve what we call the dynamic range problem looking at the temperature. And yes, in some cases, things that you cannot see with a camera, you can actually see that things are happening with a thermal camera. But then you are losing the big advantage of cameras, which are high resolution, that allows you, and color, that allows you to understand exactly things in detail. Let's look at radar. Yeah, seems like a good solution. And is it? It's, it's a good sensor because it allows you to detect, understand velocity of the object. And this is a very useful information, knowing how things are moving. But if you want to know where things are, then it's a different problem because what I'm showing on the screen is how a radar sees a typical scene because the resolution of a radar is more or less today an automotive radar some five meters. So the spot is a five meters at 100 meter. This is how you see the world if you are a radar. So a way to say that it's not very precise. And is that important? Well, uh, yes, 
it was the co one of the causes of the Tesla accident, where a radar didn't make the difference between a track and a bridge. So it was a bridge. The camera didn't help because it was very bright and the track was white. So it was like this, like this, uh, if you were looking at the clouds. And something even more interesting, if you look at the, at the image, you see that the car keep drawing even if he was not on the road anymore. So this is not what we meant by situational awareness because it doesn't matter what, if you are not on the road, you just keep moving. So it matters. It seems that there is a magical solution, which is LiDAR. Even if we are very involved in this market, you can see her augmented LiDAR and you will see why, we don't think LiDAR is neither the right solution. Why? Because the good point of LiDAR, which is being able to see things in 3D, is a little bit uh, overcome by other uh, drawbacks. If you look at this typical scene, do you want to see how a LiDAR would perceive this? It's more or less that. But in 3D, so each Light, little tiny spot that you are seeing this, you have the depth information, which is very useful, as the radar velocity information was useful. So the obvious answer is that you need to fuse the sensors. You need to combine this. And the problem is that the way you do this combination, because you want to have the advantage of each sensor, is combining the conclusions that you can get from each sensor, which means that if the radar is giving you the velocity and saying, well, it seems like a car because it's, it's moving at 100 kilometers per hour, and the camera says, well, it looks like a pedestrian because I can see clothes, I can see things that are like things that I'm used to seeing pedestrians, and then you fuse the conclusions then you are not really adding information. You are still combining partial perceptions from different sensors. This is not what you want. So this is still an unsolved problem. Sorry about the bad news. It is not so easy, yeah? So that's from the sensor part. Let's talk about the processing, the software part. It's pretty often that we do the analogy of saying, well, we need the equivalent of a brain. We need an artificial brain, artificial neocortex, let's say, which means more or less, OK, I'm not going to fuse the con conclusions of each sensor. I'm going to feed a big brain and let him figure out how to extract meaning out of that. This means a little bit magical process, also known as machine learning or deep learning, where we feed millions or as much as possible data, we give the brain examples and let him figure out if the actual perception fits this experience. That's a, an approach. But it can be easily fooled. These are not real bicycles. This is just image on a car. And if we get back to the Uber accident, what happened also is that the woman with the bicycle was classified as unknown, then as a pedestrian, then as a bicycle, then, you see, I'm taking my time because it took time to do this. And at the same time, you are moving at 70 kilometers per hour, just trying to figure out, is this a bicycle? Is it a pedestrian? We don't care. It's on the road. It's in front of you. It's 1 meter and 50, 60 centimeters. You just stop. And this is exactly what the Volvo car that was being used can do. 
because he's not thinking, but they disactivated, deactivated the standard safety measures, uh, sensors from the car. So how can we make like uh, superhuman reflexes? How can we overcome this problem of thinking too much, let's say? First is fused sensing. It's not fusing or sensor fusion. It's a little different in the sense that we are not combining the conclusions of each sensor separately. We think that you should fuse beforehand. You should put all the data in a same reference. And this reference, it's a 3D reference because your world is 3D. And that's why LiDAR is important because it's an enabler of 3D data. And if you want to do that, it's because this is actually adding information. Because if you look at the same reality from different angles, you understand a lot better what's happening. But you need a 3D reference. And this is exactly an example of how you can do that. We can go from a very sparse data of a 3D LiDAR to a very mass dense and super resolution 3D data. How we do that? We do that because each information that is coming from the sensor is always related to a previous perception. You are not discovering the world each time that you open your eyes. You, as a human, have a memory of what happened some milliseconds before what you are actually seeing. And that is helping you a lot to understand the present time. So this is what we are doing here. We are understanding the past to better understand the present time, which means, in technical terms, that we are integrating the signal in position terms, and we are creating a kind of live 3D map. If you want to see this on the automotive world, this is the same thing. What you see on the screen is almost nothing because the LiDAR is very sparse. But if you integrate this signal, if you are able to figure out how the past is related to the present, you can build a 3D map in real time. And this is giving you a far better perception of the environment. And why do you want that? You want that because it's a key enabler to solve some of the drawbacks of the neocortex or the artificial neocortex, which means that you don't want this to be so slow. You don't want to spend so much energy as a brain needs. You make the analogy with the human brain. We have a big brain, which is needing a lot of blood, a lot of energy. You don't want a high-end computer that is taking a lot of time to, to, to process the data you're getting. And most important, if possible, you want to minimize the decisions that are based on huge data sets that are the reference. You need a different combination between knowing and learning. We got inspired by the works of uh, Nobel Prize in Economy. I don't know if you know this, this book, which models the human brain as having two systems. One, which is a system one, it's a fast, effortless, reptilian brain, if you want. The second one is the neocortex we talked about, the, the one that can, be, can make very complex thinking, but also a more expensive one in terms of energy and time. So what would be the equivalent to the reptilian brain in the car would be a sensor which is integrating all these different data from different spectral domains, that what we could call multispectral sensor in the same device, that is making this, playing the same role as the reptilian brain, which means it's not doing everything. It's not replacing the brain. It's just making some decisions, some critical decisions very fast. And 
with using very low power, low processing, and without relying on learning, without relying on any model or reference, because then you are as good as your data set. Can you do that? Yeah, we can do that. This is uh, the same 3D model in life, in real time, where we are showing that we can classify each small point of the LiDAR in real time. We can know where is the road, where are the trees, where are the buildings. You can see in white what we call movable objects, things that are not moving, but can start moving any time. And we are doing this without machine learning, without any data set, without any model, and without a map. We are discovering this in real time. This is for statical environment, but also for sure in high speed moving scenarios where you need to understand how things are evolving over time in a very low time. And for sure, on also in pedestrian ID and tracking, this is an example in, in Santa Clara University in Silicon Valley, where we can understand how pedestrians are moving and evolving in the environment. This approach of making a multispectral device that is able to see the full reality at once, combined with a reptilian brain, an artificial reptilian brain, we think is a good complementary solution to the artificial neocortex. This is what we think can provide superhuman reflexes to the autonomous car. This is what we think can help to get to the point where we can have smart machines, smart cars, and trust that we can be safer using them. Thank you very much. <laughs>